When it comes to looking ahead to a seasonal forecast, we have to look at the big drivers in the atmosphere. Tyler Hamilton, we have been talking about La Nina, La Nina, La Nina, but we've got a new player. A new driver, a new main driver, El Nino. And we'll get into the details on sort of at the basic level, what is El Nino and how does it really impact North America and what flavor of El Nino are we looking at this winter season? So you can have La Nina, which is what we have had in the past. You can have neither El Nino or La Nina. Uh, but here we are. We're in El Nino for sure. You've probably heard that word a lot lately. And people say, well, it's an El Nino winter. But what does that mean? Well, yeah. Well, first of all, we got to look at the waters in the equatorial region, 6,000 kilometers away from Canada, right? But Kim, this can reconfigure our atmosphere that far away, continents away. So we're going to watch this warmer than normal water temperature develop. That happens when the typical trade winds weaken. So that really allows that warmer water to build up across central and eastern Pacific. And that's exactly what we're going to keep our eyes on peaking this winter season. This is looking at where the El Nino is. And then it looks like we don't have a lot of difference in temperatures around the globe. This is particularly warm here, but it doesn't look particularly cold anywhere else. Well, yeah, Kim, this is the wild card factor for, for Canada, because if we really increase the background temperatures everywhere, maybe perhaps El Nino behaves more like a mild or moderate El Nino. And that's mm. a big distinction if we look at the different intensities of El Nino across Canada, you get, you know, wildly different flavors. You look at a mild El Nino, for example, has more of a disposition to get those cooler temperatures flowing in eastern Canada. But hey, the West, weak, strong, mild is the theme there. Okay, there's, I, I understand weak and strong. Madoki's new for me. So maybe it's new for a few others. Let's get into Madoki. Yeah, that's like a New York <laughs> Times crossword Sunday edition. That's pretty, uh, so essentially with the Madoki, we're all, we're just looking at the position of that warm water. So it's not nestled up necessarily along the east coast of South America, sorry, west coast of South America. It's pushed a little bit further west, more central Pacific, and that is going to really change the configuration of the upper levels of the atmosphere and perhaps push some colder temperatures at times, especially through the latter half of winter across eastern Canada. We have to look at the past in order to really predict what's going to happen in the future. It's not 100%, of course, we know. But when we look at some past strong El Ninos, particularly 2015, that was our last one about eight years ago, and it was a strong one. It was strong, and for the most part, Kim, it brought coast-to-coast -coast warmth. But, you know, February 2016 dropped a temperature at Pearson to minus 26. That's the coldest temperature uh, this century, right? So even though that was an exceptionally mild event with El Nino that caused a worldwide phenomena and climate issues, uh, we can't rule out uh, a complete absence of cold this winter, Kim. See, this is why we still have a job, Tyler, because there's always something to talk about, even when we have an El Nino, and this one is a little bit unpredictable. Uh, yeah, exceptionally unique having that background warmth surrounding the globe, that lack of ocean contrast, Kim. And then it's all about the timing of that warm water sloshing a bit further west. So that will be kind of the wild card factor in terms of how winter is anticipated to end across Canada. I hope Madoki becomes the word of the winter, the new polar vortex. Everyone will be saying it, and you heard it here first, probably. Okay, so we're watching El Nino. You'll have to stay tuned to the Weather Network to see how it unfolds.